Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Back on the patch 8.5 test server this time we're taking a look at the British tier 3 premium self propelled gun, the Sexton artillery piece. Before we go on to the details of the tank itself however, um, those of you who are wondering oh what's changed, what's changed, what's changed, second version of the test build, don't worry your German medium tanks appear to have been left almost completely alone. No mention of any changes in the patch notes to the Leopard or the Leopard prototype or the Indian Panzer um, a couple of very, very minor uh, bug fixes, model fixes, for, I think it was the 3001D, let me just check the tech tree, but absolutely no significant changes, yeah, the 3001D, no significant changes to the German mediums. Um, a couple of vehicle model fixes to some of the three new, the tier 2, 3 and 4 Russian light tanks, uh, and that's pretty much it. Very, very minor changes. Uh, nothing really significant between the first version of the test patch and the current version of the test patch. Now, this thing, the Sexton, uh, it's the first of the British SPG to be introduced. It's a premium vehicle. It'll set you back 1,250 gold, which is the same price as one week's premium account. The fact that they're giving us this thing now in 8.5 does indicate that 8.6 is going to see the introduction of British artillery. And so anybody who wants to get a head start on British artillery one of these things would be a good investment because you can start training British artillery crews in it. And this is one of the attractions of the Sexton. Um, but before I get on, on to that, let me just have a quick look at the tech tree and I'll show you the sort of thing that I'm talking about. For those of you who aren't aware, by the way, uh, I've mentioned it in a couple of videos and I really should mention it every time I do a premium video because you never know when somebody's watching one of my videos for the first time. Premium vehicles. Uh, tier 8 premiums, people get tier 8 premium vehicles to earn credits because they make a metric butt ton of money. Anything that is premium and isn't tier 8 doesn't make as much money as the tier 8s, but that's not really the reason people buy them. People buy them to train crews. Now, it's not going to work just yet for the Sexton uh, because it's the only British SPG. But, for example, if you were to go to the tech tree and look at... The Dickamax. There it is. Five crew members. It's a tier 6 premium German tank destroyer. Uh, here we have the T25. Tier 5 premium German medium tank. Five crew members. What you can do, say I was to buy the Dickamax, and I already had a Jagdpanzer IV, Jagdpanther, Jagdpanther II, Ferdinand, Jagdtiger, whatever. What you could do was take your Jagdtiger crew and put it in the Dickamax. And you wouldn't have to pay to retrain them because it's a premium vehicle of the same nationality, it's German, and the same type. They're both tank destroyers. And then I could I could take my Jagdtiger out and do my daily double and get double crew XP in the Jagdtiger. Then I could take the Jagdtiger crew and put them in the Dickamax and do the daily double in the Dickamax, get double crew XP. So effectively my Jagdtiger crew were getting double crew XP. Twice. Here's the problem. The Jagdtiger has a crew of six. The Dickamax only has a crew of five. So you couldn't train all of your Jagdtiger crew twice a day using that method. That's what the Jagdtiger 88 was put in for. Again, six crew members. If you look at the Russian tech tree, similar problem. The SU-12244, four crew members. This was the first Russian premium tank destroyer to be introduced. Now, it's basically only good if you're going down this line here, the second, the new line, of Russian tank destroyers because the SU-101, 4 crew, 100 M1, 4 crew, 12254, 5 crew, oh not so good, Object 263, 5 crew again. So if you were using the SU-12244 for crew training you could only train 4 crew members a day in it, well 4, four crew members per vehicle, which was fine for the tier 7 and 8 Russian tank destroyers but not so good for the tier 9 and 10 and no use whatsoever if you had the SU-152, the ISU-152, the Object 704, or the Object 268. They all have five crew members as well. Well, this thing was introduced here, the SU-100Y. That has six crew members. So you could put any existing Russian tank destroyer crew in there without having to retrain them and do your daily doubles on the SU-100Y. So that's why the Sexton, it's a long way of getting to the point, but that's why the Sexton is good news, because it's got six crew slots. 
what are the tier three tank destroyers? Have six crew slots? <laughs> um, I don't think many of them are going to have. Let's have a quick look. So it's good to see. Let's have a look at the Russians. What do you got? Well, yeah, we've already seen the SU-26 has five. Yeah, the Germans. Where's the Vesper and the Sturmpanzer II? Five crew members. Five crew members. It seems to be pretty standard. Where's the M37? There we are. Oh, that has six crew members. Okay, the French. Four crew members. Chinese don't have artillery yet. So it's good to see that they're thinking ahead and they're thinking, well, we're going to introduce a British premium SPG, but we want to make sure everybody is going to be able to use it when we put the rest of the British SPGs in to train their SPG crews and not have a spare crewman left over because this thing only has four crew slots or five crew slots. They've given it six crew slots. So great news, great news for people wanting to buy the British SPGs looking for a training vehicle. So there's that. Now, the stats of the thing itself. It's pretty standard. Tier 3. I was going to say Tier 6 there. don't know why. Tier 3 tank uh, tank destroyer. Oh, I'm, I'm being crap today. It's a pretty standard Tier 3 artillery piece. 160 hit points. It dies if you so much as look at it. It's got a pretty powerful engine, though. A 400, 400 horsepower engine for something that only weighs 26.36 tonnes. And th those second... Well, those tracks give it a very, very... Um, the equipment fit, you can fit whatever you like. Loads of extra space. Loads of weight up to the load limit there. 31 tonne load limit, even jam-packing it full of equipment, nowhere near the load limit. So you'll be able to fit whatever you like to this thing. 400, hour, uh, 400 horsepower engine, 26 tonne vehicle. So reasonably powerful, a little sluggish to accelerate, but in a straight line goes pretty fast, 40.2 kilometres per hour. Horribly slow at turning, but we expect this of artillery, only 24 degrees per second. And armour, garbage. 50, 31, 38. Well, we don't expect these things to be well armoured, so again, doesn't come as a surprise. As an open top vehicle, it has very, very good view range for Tier 3, 360 metres, and surprisingly, well, not surprisingly and yet unsurprisingly, it is only Tier 3 with a 570 metre signal range, and yet that's a Tier 9 radio but that only has a 570 metre signal range, so that's kind of bizarre, but not, not unexpected. It's only Tier 3. Now the gun... The gun is interesting, and I really don't know what to make of the gun. We're going to compare it to the gun on everybody's Tier 3 favourite, the SU-26. And the SU-26's 122mm howitzer is a good gun. This, this is a, such a fun Tier 3 artillery piece to be using. Um, rate of fire, the Sexton's 25-pounder, which is 87mm. It's a much smaller calibre, and this is weird. It's much smaller calibre, so, OK, better rate of fire. We expect that. It's easier, and with that many loaders, <laughs> it's, it's got to be easier to get the shell into the gun barrel because it's not as big a shell. So, OK, but much, much better rate of fire. Eight rounds per minute versus 6.45. That's really, really good. Penetration, not as good. 44 with standard HE versus the 61 of the SU-26. But look at the damage. This is just, wow. It's an 87mm gun versus a 122mm gun. It does almost twice as much damage. 150 for the SU-26, 280 for the Sexton. It's also substantially more accurate. It, it's pretty inaccurate. It's low-tier artillery. 0.47 is not accurate. But it's better than the 0.53 of the SU-26. The only thing that the SU-26 really beats it on, other than penetration, is aiming time, 4.6 seconds, versus the Sexton's 5.1, and that 5.1 second aim time is pretty bad. You will feel that. But it's not just about the raw stats of the gun. One thing that the SU-26 does have, that, that square beats the Sexton every way, is what happens if a shell misses. Because you can see the SU-26's standard credit purchased high explosive round has a 2.49 meter splash damage radius. But the Sexton's is only 1.39. And that's the Achilles heel, if you like, of the Sexton. It's a fairly low caliber gun. You have to hit the target. If you miss by even a little, you're just going to do no damage. So that's kind of the balancing factor there. Yes, it fires faster. Yes, it's more accurate. Yes, it does more damage. But you have to hit the target. Um, even the slightest miss will just result in zero damage. Whereas the SU-26 can afford to be a little more sloppy. Now, ammunition choices. You've got your standard high explosive, 
for premium gold or lots and lots and lots of credit, and that's 2,800 credits per shot, all seven gold, you've got this armor piercing. And then you've got your credit bought armor piercing, and the difference is 44 penetration, 280 damage with standard high explosive, 92 millimeters of penetration, only 180 damage with the uh, premium ammo, and 71 millimeters of penetration, and the same 180 damage with standard credit bought armor piercing ammo. Now, I don't have a lot of experience at driving this thing, but in the games that I have seen, the armor piercing ammunition on this thing is garbage. <laughs> it is very, very. I, I, I'm going to show you a game where I played with Quickie Baby, uh, and he, I was using standard HE, just bog standard, bought with credits, high explosive ammunition. Quickie Baby was using the premium armor piercing, and he was hitting the same number of targets as I was. But every shot he fired bounced off. Perhaps the you know the random number generator gods were just against him in that match. But the experience I have, which is not a massive amount of experience, I must I mean you know I must warn you, it's literally one game's experience of watching somebody use armor piercing ammo in this thing, and it was just crap. Bounced like a bitch. Not one single penetrating hit. Every single shot fired bounced off the targets. And it was only, uh, well, it wasn't a particularly high tier. It certainly wasn't tier 6. Um, tier 4 or 5 at the most. You'll see in the replay. Uh, and his shots just were not penetrating. Whereas I was consistently doing the same amount of damage. I was never doing that 280. I never have done that 280. But it didn't matter what I was shooting at whether it was a heavily armoured target, a lightly armoured target, as long as I was scoring direct hits, it was doing anything between 60 and 80 damage. So that kind of led me to believe that, for some bizarre reason, this 25-pounder ammo just seems to do the same damage regardless of what you hit, whether it was a heavily armoured target or not. And to be fair, in that game, there weren't that many heavily armoured targets. But then I played another game, and... And there were some heavily armoured targets. There were, um, there were Churchills. And suddenly, I'm hitting Churchills, and I'm doing 180 damage. So, I think it's literally just a case of just random, just random factors. Um, perhaps I was just hitting the Churchills at the weakest armoured spot. I mean, the, the, the Churchills are very, very well armoured on paper, but they're covered in weak spots. It's difficult to say that this gun doesn't do a lot of damage, um, or that this gun does consistent small amounts of damage to everything it shoots at. All I do know is I have no problems hitting and damaging targets with this gun, um, and it's a fun, fun little artillery piece to play. The rate of fire is just amazing. The aiming time does bite a bit, but it's reasonably accurate, and the damage potential is definitely there. And it seems to be very, very, very consistent. Also has a very, very good firing arc. That gun can point itself... It's about a... Some, I mean, it may even be a 90-degree arc, or perhaps not as much as that, maybe a 70-degree arc, but it, it, it's it's very, very good gun traverse as well. Also, the... Um, it's not quite a mortar like the SU-26, for example, which basically the gun barrel, when you're firing, the gun barrel's right up here and it lobs those shells right down on top of the targets. But it does have very, very, very high firing trajectory, a very, very pronounced parabolic arc, which basically means that it lobs the shell right up in the air and then comes down almost on top of the target. So that those guys hiding behind those rocks that would be safe from other artillery... You're not really safe from the sexton. All in all, it's a very, very capable little machine. And I wonder if it's just... Obviously, it's far too early to draw comparisons, but is this the way the British artillery is going to go? Is it going to be rapid-firing, um, high damage, low splash, kind of like a bit like the French, but with a bit more damage? Don't know. Based on looking at the sexton, that would appear to be the case, but we're not going to know until 86 possibly, when we see the rest of the British artillery. But if this is any indication of way of the way the British artillery is going to go, then that, that would probably be the case. Uh, it's been a fun machine to drive. Uh, fun enough to make me start grinding artillery again? Nah. <laughs> nah, sorry. Nothing's that much fun. Um, 
but those of you who do enjoy your artillery, yeah, yeah, I think you're going to have fun with this thing. So let's see how it plays. Right, this is the first game that I played in the Sexton. Um, myself and Quickie Baby, it was on his live stream. This was the actual, one of the first games we played. This was the day the test server went up. Um, <laughs> and look at that. And this is this is tier three matchmaking on the test server. People are basically trying out premiums. And that's just about it. We were lucky that there were some of these new Russian light tanks that some people were trying out. Otherwise, we, they would have been sitting in the queue for five minutes waiting to get a, a, a game. And look at all the artillery. I just, you just wouldn't want to be in a tank in this batch. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm using your standard credit bought high explosive ammo. Quickie Baby's trying the premium armor piercing. And based purely on the results of this game, my advice would be don't touch the premium ammunition on this thing with a 20 foot long barge pole. It is not worth the money. Quickie Baby. Cookie Baby was hitting the same number of targets as me, but every single shot he fired bounced. Now based purely on this game, he has that aiming time, that, oh, that over five second aiming time. What this artillery is very, very good at is if you're pre-aimed on a spot, you fire your first shot, you maybe blow their tracks off, Repeat fire, repetition fire, at the same target. It's very, very good at that. And watch this. 79 damage. And it's going to be consistent. I mean, that's an M4A2 E4. It's not especially well armoured. And that one missed by a fraction. No damage whatsoever. It, that really, really poor splash damage on these things. You, if you don't get a direct hit, forget it. You're not doing damage to anyone. Oh, here comes a T70. Never gonna hit him. Yeah, drop short. T1 heavy, Panzer 1C. Switch targets, go for the T1 Heavy. And again, 85 damage. And I seem to be doing, certainly in this game, hit, penetrated, critted something, maybe just blew his tracks off. No actual damage. And this goes based purely on my experience in this game. I came to the conclusion that premium ammunition on this thing is garbage. And it didn't matter what you hit and how much armor it had this 240 damage work of fiction it just seemed that everything i hit regardless of how much armor it had everything i hit was taking between 60 and 80 damage but check out that gun traverse that's pretty good um, right now watch the angle watch watch the arc of the shell here aiming at that t34 bang see that see how See that massive arc? That's going to mean that targets that are hidden around a corner, you're still going to be able to lob a shell over onto them. Guys who are hiding behind rocks where they're safe from most artillery, probably not going to be safe from this thing. So what have we been shooting at so far? T1 Heavy, M4... T-34. That thing only has 45 millimeters of armor. Doing the same amount of damage to that as we were to the T-1. What about this? Enemy artillery. How much damage are we going to do to this guy? Gun's supposed to be able to do 240 damage. And we do. Seventy-two. So I got the impression from this one game. Oh and there we go, we're about to win, so the Russians all start team killing anybody with the North American server tag. Welcome to the test server. Yeah, I got the impression from this game that, first of all, um, premium ammunition is utter garbage on this thing. Uh, Quickie Baby didn't do a single point of damage with his artillery in this. And it didn't matter what the armour was of the target that you were shooting at. As long as you hit them, you were going to do between 60 and 80 damage. Um, 
At least that's, that's what I thought until I managed to get another game in this thing. So this is... Um, I actually played three games in the Sexton so far. Um, the second game that I played was just horrible. I didn't hit a single thing. Uh, it was just some artillery and then a whole bunch of tier 3 and 4 light tanks. How I didn't get overrun and killed, I don't know. But th the little buggers just move too quickly for this thing to hit them. But you can do that with an Su-26 or a Vespa. That's one thing this thing is not very good at. Because of that long aiming time, um, it's not very good at hitting fast-moving small targets. What it is very good at is pummeling large, slow-moving targets. So here we go. It's a tier 5 game, same as the last one. This time we're on cliff. They've got a Mark III Churchill, a KV-1, a T-14. Unfortunately, this is the best that the matchmaker could do for us. Hardly anybody's playing down at these low tiers. And I think the trick to this thing is successful pre-aiming. And there we go, there's a tree just dropped. There's something over there. I'll drop a shot anyway. 112 rounds of ammo in this thing. It does take a long time for that shell to reach the ground. You really, really... It does take some getting used to. It seems to take longer than I remember most other artillery doing. Oh, and I can't reach that T-14. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm just not giving it enough time. If that one had been on target, that would have been the right amount of lead time, but it wasn't, so I didn't. And that was nowhere near enough. That was aimed accurately, but he was about to get away. Okay, number 140, oh no, 240 average damage, that still only has about 140 health left. Guess he's there. Fire. Seems to have hit him. Didn't kill him though. Another E4. Remember in the previous game, I never did anything more than between 60 and 80 damage to anything. That tree falling there is probably the stug backing up. I'll, I'll probably hit him again. Ah, Churchill 3. Now, I'm not expecting to do a massive amount of damage here. And that one just did some sort of critical damage. But look at how quickly it reloads. The rate of fire on this thing is great. And bang! 192 damage. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I did hit that stug again. And he's dead. Now, USU-26 and Vespa drivers. How many times have you been firing your HE shells? Look at that, 185 damage. At targets like Churchill 3's and you'd be doing 19 damage. 30 damage. It just doesn't seem to happen with this thing. There's 70 damage. That's more what I was used to from the first game. Whoa, I didn't even see how much damage I did to that guy. <laughs> you can see the guy in chat there going, Sexton is rapid fire. Yeah, he's right. He's very, he's, he's very, very right. This this thing fires so quickly. Eight rounds per minute in artillery is is very very good. All I've left now is that A32 who escaped me earlier and their arty. Unfortunately, their artillery is out of range. We're gonna have to move up. A32 managed to suicide. And now they just have the two sextons. Still not quite close enough. There we go. Move forward, move forward, move forward. And now I should be close enough. And we know the artillery is probably in this corner. Our T-14's moving up to flush them out for us. Uh, that Lefer might have the range. He's tier four. Whoa! There's one of them. Took a flush shot. Flush shot? <laughs> is that a new word? I think it is. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this other guy is cowering away behind the corner. And do I have the range? And I'm looking for idle spots. 
He's not going to be behind that tree, but those rocks over there, he could be parked up in those bushes. T14's having a good look. Can't see him anywhere. And as you can see, that shot can lob right over the top of those rocks. No problem. If he is there, well, he wasn't there because I saw an explosion. If your shot goes in and you don't see an explosion, you hit something. Where the hell is he? Let's move forward a little more. I can now cover that corner. Oh, there he is. He took a shot. Tried to reset the cap. Bang. T14 nails him. So, that was interesting. Because the, the first game didn't matter what I fired out. I was doing between 60 and 80 damage with this gun. Which is, you know, I was at least doing some damage with this gun. Quickie Baby was using the premium high penetration AP ammo. And not, and it just bounced off everything he fired at. So, don't waste any money on the premium ammo for this thing. And, and certainly based on the results of one game, I thought, well, this thing consistently does steady, low amounts of damage to everything. But you guys driving your Vespers and your Stern Panzers and um, your SU-26s, shooting at heavily armoured targets. I mean, I'm doing between 60 and 80 damage. Um, I'm calling that low and consistent. You, you guys with other Tier 3 artillery are used to hitting tanks like Churchill 3s and T-14s and doing 19 damage. <laughs> but, but, but because the top end of this gun's damage output is so much better, the even when it hits heavily armoured targets and doesn't penetrate the armour, the low damage roll on this thing is, is that much better. And you do have that monster rate of fire. The only thing that lets this thing down is the long aiming time. But if you can be pre-aimed on a spot where you're expecting a lot of traffic, this thing kicks ass. It's really, really, really good. Um, it, it's not good at reacting to new threats because it takes so long to aim. Um, and it's not good at hitting small targets that are moving. Uh, for that, you're going to want your Stern Panzers, your SU-26s and your Vespers. This is, this, is, this is different kind of artillery. With the minuscule splash damage on the high explosive shell, you're going to need to score direct hits. So if you can pre-aim on a spot where you're expecting a lot of traffic, you're going to clean up in one of these things. And there's the post-battle results screen. And right there you can see that of the tanks that I hit, look at all the crits. Look at all the critical damage there. And that's what causes people to rage. <laughs> to rage and hate artillery so much. It's not so much the damage that they do, and when you get to higher tier artillery, it, it's the damage that they do as well. It's the fact that a hit, which isn't necessarily doing that much actual damage, is killing your gunner. It's blowing your tracks off. It's knocking out your ammo rack. It's all those crits that are reducing the effectiveness of the vehicle, and that's why people hate artillery. And you guys driving your SU-26s, Vespers and Stern Panzers, who are firing at heavily armoured targets like Churchill's and T-14s and um, sometimes, if you're particularly unlucky, um, Sherman Jumbos, and seeing very, very low damage rolls. What you're not seeing is the fact that, yeah, you might have only done 19 damage, but you also killed his commander, and you jammed his turret traverse, and, and so on and so on. And it's the critical damage that is the real pain in the arse at this sort of low level. So, is the Sexton worth getting? Well... If you've got no interest in going down the British artillery line, then no, absolutely not. Not worth getting whatsoever. On the other hand, if you are planning on going down the British artillery line, then yes. This thing costs 1,250 gold. It's, it's the same as a week's worth of premium account. It's a complete no-brainer. If you're even slightly interested in trying out the British artillery line, you need to get yourself one of these when patch 8.5 rolls out. It comes with six crew. That's going to be more than enough to use it as a training vehicle for all the other British artillery that you get um, whenever British artillery is introduced probably patch 8.6 until then you can start working on training up an artillery crew that you can immediately then put to use in any other British artillery vehicle and then retrain them for whichever artillery you, uh, you, you buy and slap them straight back into this thing every day without having to retrain them because it's a premium vehicle to uh, maximise the amount of daily double crew skill training you can get. Um, 
it's a great machine in its own right. It's got monster rate of fire, very, very good top end damage output. It, it, if you're planning on getting any kind of British artillery when they're released in, I think, patch 8.6, going by previous performance, this is a no brainer. Get yourself one of these machines. You won't regret it. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield and I'll catch you next time.